Hello, welcome to Cretasaps. I present a complete tutorial of initiation to create your own mobile apps. Let's create an application down zero. I know it is a very long tutorial, but it will help you to know many of the possibilities that our system offers to create applications. In addition, you will see how to configure some of the most used functions. Knowing this, you'll be able to create stunning mobile apps. To get started, click on Templates. You are going to enter our App Template Finder. You have more than 100 templates, classified by categories, to create your application. Click on an image to see it enlarged. Choose the template that most closely matches the application you want to create. When you have chosen your template, click on Select. In the next screen you can see the app template in a simulator. You can navigate to test it, click on their contents and check if the template you like. For this example, we are going to choose a template for a restaurant. Remember that all templates can be edited 100%. So any app template can serve your application. To continue, click use this template. The first thing to do is to assign a name for your application. It will be orientative so that later you find it in your list of applications. Now you must select the target platform. On Kretas apps you can create hybrid mobile applications for the most used mobile platforms. But you can also create mobile web apps. Let's make an application for Android devices. This application will serve for mobiles and tablets. Click Next. Now choose if you want an application without dabs, with standard tabs or with custom tabs. In this case we will select standard tabs. In this tutorial we will skip the configure application steps. You just accessed the application dashboard. Our tool is very powerful and contains many configuration options. Do not be scared, you will see that it is very simple. Let's see them a little by little. Here you can choose the previewer you like most. You will see how the screen resolution changes. Toggle between different models to see how your application looks in different sizes. If you want to share your app through restricted access, you must give the following link. This button will give you a direct link to show your mobile application. Use it to share the issue. In this section you can check the name of your application. You will also see the application icon that you have loaded. The app icon will be the one displayed on the desktop when it is installed on a device. You will also see the app status, if it is in design, if it has been purchased, etc. Finally, you have a button to remove this application. Another button to check usage statistics for your app. And a last button to edit the base of this template. Clicking statisticians will open a new window that will load all usage statistics. Things like facilities, how many times it has been open or demographics. Of course, since this app has not been published, the data is zero. In the next section we find access to resources within the application and resources in the cloud. The resources within the application are all those files that make up your app. Image and video files, HTML pages, native functions, etc. The cloud resources are files that can be downloaded by the users of your app. For example PDF files, this way, we will save weight in the final app. They can also be multimedia files, the user of your applications can play them in streaming. This is a feature only of premium plans. If you want to publish your application for free, when you are finished use this button to access the application form. The publish button will be used later, when you have finished your application. The install on device button will lead you to download our preview application. Download our preview application and access with the credentials you have registered on Creatures Apps. You can see the list of your applications and see how they work. It is the best tool to check how your application is remaining before publishing it. Finally, the button Share This Application is intended for those users who want to create applications for your customers. With this button, you can share the application with them. Remember, if you have any active pricing plan, we will help you create your applications. Use the chat window to communicate with us. We are happy to support you. Let's look at the next section. 
This section contains all the tools for editing the application. Edit Pages contains all the pages and functions that the app contains. In Google Play Properties you can edit all the data that will appear on Google Play when you publish your app. It will only be necessary to complete it if you want to publish your app for free or if you want to publish it under our developer account. Page settings allows you to configure a multitude of navigation and display parameters for the different pages that make up your app. Things like transitions between pages, properties of advertising banners, sharing options, and so on. In App Multimedia you will have to insert the icons and load images of your app. We will see in detail when we advance in the tutorial. In Design Properties you can adjust different styles for the non-native pages that make up your application. With one click you can change the background image of all pages, change font type, size and color and more. The push notifications are small messages that you will be able to send to all mobile devices that have your app installed. The announcement will reach the notification area of the mobile device directly. These messages can also contain text, images or links. They will be very useful for informing the users of your applications of events or promotions related to the application. Do not use it to promote other things that are unrelated to your app, or it will be removed from app stores. You are free to send as many push notifications as you need. You should know that the free plan does not include push notifications. The geofences are very similar to push notifications. But in this case, notifications will reach users who are in a certain area. For example, you can dial a radio in an area of New York, your message will only reach people within that radius. With navigation settings you can adjust the tabs of your application. Edit tab icons, number of tabs, color and more. In application settings you can configure a multitude of parameters of your application. We will see them in detail later. The last button in this section is App Style. With it you can edit the colors of the native pages of your app. Also the bars and eyelashes colors. PA will adjust the default colors for your application. Now let's start editing. We'll start with Edit Pages. In this section we have all the pages and functions of the application. You can select any page to view in the simulator. Toggle between pages to view them. With the plus button, you can add new functions. With the least, delete the one you have selected. The third button is to duplicate, so you create an exact copy of the selected page. The last button will change the name of the page you want. The first four pages are the tabs thus, tab 1, refers to tab 1, html, tab 2 to tab 2, html, and so on. If I had more tabs we would see tab 5, tab 6, etc. The edit button will use it to configure the content of the selected page, and the style button to edit the layout of, only the selected page. Ok, now let's edit the main page, tab 1. Click Edit. You are now inside editing an HTML page. Your mobile device will show you a preview of your design. To the left you have two complete toolboxes with which to edit each page. The Layout Elements is a set of tools with which you can add and edit complete elements. For example, you can edit a button with image and link with ease. The Design Toolbox contain useful tools for text editing and powerful tools to add functions to the page. We will start editing with the layout elements. With one click, activate layout to start editing. You will see that the elements of the page are now shaded in green. Click on any space to select it and a new click to edit it. With this, you will open a new window in which you will find the different settings that you can apply to edit the green shaded area. In the left box you can type the text and click apply to see the changes. As you can see, we have edited the text. Now, we can edit the logo, click to select it and another to edit it. A window will open again to configure the item. Select HTML to inspect the function. Click the pencil button to edit the image. The resource manager opens. The resource manager contains all the resources that make up the application. You can upload your own image or choose an image from among all the ones you already have available. To make sure the image is going to fit all screen resolutions, 
go to metrics and in the width right 100%. When you finish click apply to verify the result. Let's edit another element. Now more slowly, we will edit a button that also has an image. If you place the mouse cursor over it will shade the whole area of the element green. Click once on this area to select it. And click again to open the item configuration window. As we are going to edit an element that contains an image, a link and a text. Now we have more adjustments available. In the area on the left we can change the landing page of the link. We can also change the image of the element, and we can write the text that we want it to show. Actually, this element is a simple button. If we display the link we see that we can assign a page among all those who already have the application. Unfold the list to check it and choose the landing page you want. When you are done click save to save the changes. Then click apply to return to the edit. Now let's edit another button. Again place the cursor over, click to select the item and another click to open the settings window. Click the pen icon for the links and select a landing page. Then click save and apply for the changes to be displayed. You already know how to edit the links and change the text of the button elements. A very useful feature is the possibility of duplicating the element. This way you can add more buttons in your menu. Select the item you want to duplicate and repeat the steps to open the configuration window. The duplicate button will allow you to create an exact copy of the item. The delete buttons will delete the selected item. Click duplicate to perform a replica of the item. Now the button is two times. Let's edit the new button. Repeat the steps to open the configuration window. Write a text for this button. The text in the image will give us an idea of the content that is the when we press the button. Make it a short text, one or two words. To change the image we will click on the button of the pen. This will open the resource manager. As you know, the resource manager contains all the files that will be inside the application. You can upload your own images using the upload button. Make sure your files do not have a lot of size, or your final application will be too large. In the window on the left you can preview the media files. Find the image you want for the button and click choose. Ok, we've already changed the image, click apply to see the changes. Now the button that we have duplicated contains another image and another text. Save to keep the changes, we recommend that you save time to make sure that you do not miss the changes you are making. Click save, then click the done button to finish. This will bring you back to the page editing window. Now let's edit the page style individually. We will change the wallpaper. Select the page you want to edit, in this case the tab number 1, and click the style button to access the design properties. The first fields you can edit refer to the wallpaper. You can assign an image as wallpaper, as it is currently, or you can put a background color. In the resource manager you will find the current wallpaper. You can also upload your own design using the load button. To set a background color, first remove the image from the first field. Now open the color picker, let's choose a background color. If you have corporate colors and want to use them you can enter them here. Once the background color is chosen, Use the Apply Changes button to check the result in the mobile previewer. As you can see, the background color has changed to the one we have chosen. Let's repeat it by changing to another color. Repeat the steps to choose a new color and apply the changes to see the result. Now, I will put a background in red tones. As you can see, it's very simple. As a general rule we usually put pictures for the wallpapers, but the colors look great. Now we will put the previous image. We simply look it up in the file manager, select it and apply it to see the change. If you want to put your own image, I recommend you download this same wallpaper from the resource manager and take your measurements as a reference. Let's now edit the second tab of the application, page tab 2. Click edit. This page is very useful to provide information about us, about the company or contact information. 
All the fields are customizable and contain interesting possibilities like click to call or click to send an email. In the box on the right you can see the different elements that we have already added. You can sort, add new, or delete the ones we already have. With a simple click on one of them you can edit its properties. For example, type the company name or trademark in the title field and a small description below. I will write create your apps in the title field and information about us below. The latter option gives you the ability to add a function to this element. When a user presses it will perform the indicated function. You can add a link to a map, an application page, a link to a website, you can make an audio reproduce. You have many possibilities. When finished, click on accept and check the result. Now the first element, shows as title the name of the company or trademark and below a brief description. As with normal pages, this page type also allows you to edit the layout. Choose the layout elements for this edition by clicking layout. Place the cursor over the element and when you see it shaded in green, click on it to select it and another click to open the editing window. In this case I want to put a grey border again. To do this, I choose the editing section of the border. In the first option I will choose a solid type edge. Simply open the drop down and select solid. In the second option use the up and down arrows to adjust the width of the border. I will put a width of 1 pixel. In the third option, you can choose the color of the border. A small window will open with a color selector to choose the one you want. I will write the color I want for this edge. Watch how it is done. The last option determines the radius of curvature of the edges. That is, it adjusts the design of the corners of the element, in this case, 3 is fine. When you finish, apply the changes. As you see, we have already put an edge identical to the others. Now we will continue editing, click on the element postal address to configure it. Set the phone field, the information field about the company, adjust all the data you want. As you can see, it is very easy to change the contents of this page and its design, when you are done. Click save and done to return to page editing. In the third tab of this template we have added a 360 degree viewer. It is an incredible function with which the user of your application can feel that it is within the space that we want. You can view the entire space from a point and navigate through it. At the moment, this feature is only available for iOS devices, it will not work on Android devices. To edit the page, click edit. Once we are inside, we must load the images of the space, or of the place that we want to mount. For the sensation to be real, the images must be consecutive. The first image will be the starting point, the second image, the same point but a little more to the right. The third image should be like the second, but capturing some space to the right. So until you make the complete turn on the starting point. In the right area you will see the element box. Here we must add all the images. The amount of images is random, it will depend on the space. But you should keep in mind that the more images there are, the more accurate the feeling of being in that space. In the first option, the space title changes. This will be the title that the user of your app will see when you are browsing through it. In this box you can manage all the images that will contain the 360 degree viewfinder. Remember that you must upload the ordered images just as you took the photos. When you select an already inserted photo, the box below will show you its properties. You can edit the title of the image by typing the one you want or you can change the image. The plus, minus and arrow buttons can be used to add, delete or reorder the images. Next, I'll select the image number 3 and open the file manager to find another image, so you'll see how to do it. To do this, select the image number 3 and click on the button next to the image. In the resource manager we can search an image among all the ones we have already uploaded, or we can upload a new image. When you have the image you want, click on choose. In this case, we have changed the image number 3, choosing another new image. Now, we have assigned the photograph number 4. As you have seen, it is very easy to configure this function. The real difficulty lies in taking photographs. 
because once you have made some good photos, you only have to load them here in an orderly way. When done, click save and then click done to continue. In the fourth tab of this template we have a menu. It is a menu with buttons that links to different pages of the app. In this app template, the menu is designed to access social networks, the reservation system, etc. To edit the contents of this menu, just click on the edit button. The first option that we find in this type of menu page, offers you the possibility to change this function for another. Or change menu type. As with most pages or functions, on the right you can see the edit boxes of the menu items. If you select one of them, the table below will show the different properties of the element. The configurations you choose here, you can see them in the mobile preview. From the element properties, you can change the icon, text or title of the button and the link. You can choose between a link to a page of those that make up the application, a link to a web page that will look inside the application, or a link to a web page that will open in the browser of the mobile device. We will make some adjustments so you can see how it is done. I'm going to select the third element, gallery. Now we see its properties, if I display the button's link. The drop-down will show me the pages of the application. You can choose the page you want, it will be the page that the button will open, click on one, and it will be selected. Now I will look for a new icon, to change the icon of the item, click on the button that is in the image adjustment. This will open the resource manager and show you the selected image. You can upload your own icon or you can choose some of our gallery of resources. To access the icon or fund resource gallery click on the resource gallery button. This will open a new window where you can search among a multitude of images, choose the one you like and click on accept. Here you can find many icons, but you may not find the one you need. In the chat service we are to help you, ask us the icon or the image that you need and, if we have it, we will provide it to you. With these simple steps we have edited the button of our gallery. Repeat the steps to configure the different accesses in this menu. Finally, if you need to add or remove a menu button, use the plus and minus buttons, if you need to sort them, use the up and down arrows. As an example, now we are going to add a new button, to add a new menu button, we must click the plus button. The new button will appear at the end of the menu, you can see it in the parser. To change your settings, you must select it in the menu of elements and change the settings in the properties of the element. I'll create it, then I'll select it, and the first thing I'll do is write a text as a button title. In this case, I'll call it new link. Now I will display the link option to indicate the link of the button. I'll select the promotional coupon page. Finally, I'll add an icon for this button. To do this, I will click on the image button, the resource manager will open and I will be able to add an already available image or upload an own image. I will choose any image. When you have chosen your image click the button to choose to insert it. Well, we have already created a new button, assigned a link to an application page, placed an image and written the text. Let's see what the internal and external link options. The link buttons will load a link to a website within the application. This means that when the user presses this menu button will open a web without leaving the application. It is enough to select this option and to write the destination link to activate it. You must write the complete link, including HTTP. On the contrary, the external link will open a website out of the application. You will need to make use of the web browser that you have installed. That's it. When you finish click save and in fact to return to the page editing menu. The next page that we are going to set up is the discount coupon page, or promotional coupon. The mechanism of this function is very simple, every time the user of the application consumes a product, the seller shows a code QR. The user scans the code and gets a stamp. When you complete all required seals, the user will get the reward created by the seller. We can establish many conditions to obtain the prize, now we will see. To configure the function click the edit button. Once inside you will see that the system is the same as in other functions. On the left you will see the previewer and to the right the properties boxes. 
The preview shows the current state of the design and configuration. In the first view the user checks that he has, for the moment, achieved zero stamps of the four that he needs to obtain the prize. The next option shows you a link to an instruction page with which you will obtain better information. In the table below the user will find the description of the promotion and the discount or prize he will get when he gets all the stamps. In the box on the right we find all possible configurations. The first option to configure is the name of the promotion, write the one that best describes the prize. The coupon image will be the image that will be displayed to the application user when all the stamps have been completed. We have included a sample image, to change it you must click on the button to the right, this will open the resource manager. We recommend you download this image and edit it to make sure it works correctly. To do this, use the download button when you have it selected. Then, in the same way, load your own image. By means of the third and fourth option, it adjusts the start and end date of this promotion. You can leave it blank if the promotion is permanent. The QR code data field is a validation field. You must generate a QR code with a text or a link, with numbers, with whatever you want. That text, with which you have generated the code, you must enter it in this field. This provides a level of security. Only the QR code you have generated will work. In the footer you have a link to our QR code generator. In the next field you must indicate the number of times that the user must seal their coupon to obtain the prize. You can also indicate the number of hours that must elapse before the user can reseal their coupon. As a follow-up, we recommend that you always indicate some quantity. At least one hour. Marker with a blade if the user can obtain the prize several times. The last section shows the description. The field requires HTML code, so we recommend you edit it with the text editor of the toolboxes. That's it. You've already set up the promotional QR coupon page for your application. In this step, we will edit a menu system with buttons that do not have boxes with the properties of the elements. First click the edit button on the menu page to access the edit. As you will see now, for this edition you only have layers of elements and tools. The layout elements allow you to select an element completely and edit every detail. Clicking on this box will activate its functions. Once activated, when you move the mouse over an element it will be highlighted in green. If you click on the item you will select it. With another click you will open the configuration and editing window of the element. In this type of menu page we recommend that you use the design tools only for fast text editing. With a click on the box you can activate them. Let's now edit some elements. With the element layer activated, hover the mouse over the main image. Notice how the entire element is shaded in green. Click to select it and another click to open the configuration window. As you have seen, the element is an image, we will change it by another image. Here we could put a corporate logo or a title for the menu. To change the image, click on the HTML section. In the box on the right you will see the properties of this section. As we only have one image, nothing else we can change the image. Click the button to open the resource manager and search for another image or upload your own. If you want to upload your own image, I recommend that you download the current one to get the measurements. This way you will make sure that your image works perfectly. We will change the number one logo for logo number two, which we have already prepared. I will use the search engine to quickly find logo number two. Once we have it, we select it and click on the button to choose. We see that we have now correctly inserted the number two logo. For the moment we will not make any more changes. So we will apply to see the result. You can already see the new logo, although it is very similar, it is a translucent grey band underneath. Now quickly put the number one logo back. Simply repeat the steps to open the configuration window and type the name of the file in the field. But this time, I will also adjust the width of the image. To do this, go to the configuration section of the measurements. In order for the image to fit well with all screen resolutions, 
it is advisable to adjust the width of the image in percentage and leave the high. Let's try to reduce the image size slightly. It will now occupy 70% of the screen. We apply again to see the changes. You will see that we have the first logo again, and now there is a margin on both sides of the screen of the device. Now we will edit the menu button. Repeat the same steps as above to select the item and open the configuration window. As this element is a button we will have different settings. In this case, apart from having all the settings that have the element of the image, we find the settings of a button. Your link, button icon and text. Clicking on the links edit button will open a drop down with all the pages that make up the application. Choose the page you want to open this button. Keep in mind that all the pages or functions that you add to the application must be linked to some menu. The action button will allow you to change the type of link. You can choose between pages, or call a map with a location, add a product to the shopping cart, open an audio file, etc. The possibilities of the layers of elements are immense. It is best that you try out the different options and become familiar with it. Remember that we are in the chat to support you to build your perfect application. Setting up the Facebook page is very simple. Just click Edit Page to access your settings. Nothing else you will find a field to configure. You must enter the link to the Facebook account. You can also change this page to a link to WordPress or eBay. Just click on the icon and write the link address. When you finish click Save, then click Done to return to page editing. The contact form page allows users of your application to send an email to the recipient you choose. The user must complete the fields indicated as required and optionally, complete the rest of fields. Click the edit button to access the form settings. In this case you can configure all the parameters in the layout of the page. In the first field, type the destination email. All contact forms will be delivered to you. In the second field write the confirmation message. This message will be seen by your app users when they have successfully submitted a contact form. For the forms to be delivered correctly, it is very important that you adjust the lower section, click set default settings to complete the fields automatically. If any field is left unfilled, the emails will not be delivered. I will click on the button. Notice how the fields are to be completed automatically. Once we have completed the settings we can proceed to edit the layout of the form. For the first part of the addition, I'll use the Layout Elements tools. Click on the box to activate. With this impressive tool you can edit the complete elements. Place the mouse cursor over an element, you will see how the entire body of the element is shaded in green. Click another click to select it and another click to open the configurations window of its properties. We will be able to edit the whole layout of the element. In this case, the element is a text field. We can change the background color, box size, text format, borders. Everything we want. Let's try to change the color of the border. To do this, go to the borders section. On the right you will find the editable fields from this section. Depending on the type of item, the fields may vary. To edit the border color click on the edit field. This will open the color selector. It contains a complete color palette for you to choose the one you prefer. You can also write your own color. I will choose a random color. Once chosen, click OK to accept and then click apply to see the changes. As you can see, now the edge of the first element has changed to the color we have selected. We are going to edit another element, but now we will change the button to send the form. Repeat the previous steps, select the item and click to open the configuration window. The configuration window will always open showing the last tab you used. The last tabs are used to configure the design of the elements. The first tab will serve to configure the function of the element. In this case the element is a button. As you can see, the submit form button already is the written function. But we can change it by other functions by clicking on the edit button. For example, I will indicate that when you click on the button, 
the user navigates to the first tab of the application. When you have done click on save and then click apply. You will not see aesthetic changes, but now the link has changed. Finally, if you want to change the text of the fields, you can do this with the HTML function. Click here to see the source code for this page. Scroll down to find the end of the code. Find the fields plus Jolda and edit the text that indicates. For example, this is the element of the name field. If you want to translate it, change name after plus Jolda and type name. Edit only the content inside the quotation marks. I am going to change the word message by any phrase so you can see how it is done. Notice that I only change the text between quotation marks. As you can see, it's very simple, but be careful when you edit. I recommend you keep changes often. Click on layout to get the preview back. Repeat the steps to change all the fields you want. Notice how we have successfully changed the message. Saves the changes to return to the page editing menu. The next page that we are going to edit is a product information page created in HTML5 using jQuery technology. Click edit to access the edit page. In this type of page you can also make the design you want. You can change the whole style and add as many elements as you want. For this example, we are going to edit about the design that we have created for the occasion. First, I will edit the text describing the product. For this, with an active click the design tools. It works just like any text editor, selects the text you want to delete and writes the new text. To make sure I do not lose the format, I always leave a word at the beginning and write later. Later I eliminate it. To edit the title of the page we perform the same steps, delete the current text and type the text that best represents the content of the page. Make sure it stays on a single line for the effect to be more beautiful. Notice how in this case I will also leave some text at the beginning and then erase it. As you can see, it's very simple. Now I will change the price of the product. Simply delete the text and write the new price. The current value of the product is $13. We will exchange it for $20. It's already very simple. Now let's see how text format editing works. With the layers of elements we will duplicate the text of the title. Then we will edit it with the design tools. Hover the cursor over the item you want to edit and click to select it. Again, click to open the edit window. One of the most useful functions of this tool is the option to duplicate. You will duplicate the item to replicate the content. To duplicate an item click the duplicate button. This will create an exact copy. Now we will play with this copy. Now we have the title two times. We will edit the new title. Observe attentively how we are going to change the format of the text. The tool works just like any text editor. Select the text you want to adjust and use the size button to adjust the font size. Aligns the text to the left, right, or centered. Simply select and test the different settings. The page edition is unlimited. What is recommended is to put your application in a notebook and design it later. Get familiar with this tool for best results. This will get you doing several tests. Finally, we will edit the image. To perform this edition, we recommend using the element layer. In this way, you will simply change the image, but the format of the current image will be maintained. With elements layers on, select the image and click to open the resource manager. In the resource manager, look for the image you want to place. If you want to upload your own image use the upload button. In this case we will use an image of ice cream glasses that we have already loaded. For this, I will use the search engine to quickly find the image that I am going to place. I select it and I will click the choose button to change the old image for the new image. Then click apply to view the changes. We have already placed the new image. If you want the image to be smaller, repeat the steps and go to the measures tab. Right now the image occupies the entire screen width of the device, 100%. Let's lower this measure. I recommend adjusting the width in percentage instead of using pixels. 
This will look the same on devices with different screen sizes. Apply the changes to see the result. Now the image is aligned to the left, you can center it as we did with the text before. A good option to get your app to reach a larger audience is to incorporate the share application. You will offer the users of your application the possibility of sharing the application in social networks, in WhatsApp, etc. Look for it in the Add Pages section and click Next. We recommend you incorporate this page into all your applications. The first thing to complete is the name of the application. Type in this field the name that your application will have in the app stores. Enter a brief name for descriptive, then write the description of your application and write the description to be shared. As you can see, the function automatically loads the icon of your application as an image. You can change this image for a more descriptive one. We are going to change it now for an icon with higher resolution. Now click on the icon button, this will open the resource manager window. I will use the search engine to quickly find an icon that I have previously loaded into the multimedia properties of the application. Once found, click choose and then apply to change the image. With this I have placed a higher resolution icon. Next we will change the background color of the upper section. For this, it is best to use the layout elements. Activate them with a click. Place the cursor on the item you want to edit and click to select it. Click here to open the configuration window. This window contains all possible settings for the selected item. In both design and functionality. It will automatically open for the last section used. Choose the background section to access your settings. We can write the background color or click on the background color field to open the color picker. Choose the color you like the most or type the color you want to set as the background color. At the end click on the button and then on the apply button to check the result. In this case we have set a gray color for the background. Now we will edit the action button. We will repeat the above steps. Select the button with the element layer and click to open its configuration. We will change the background color, but we will also change the border, so that the button is well appreciated. I will choose the same color that we put in the background. In the section borders we will choose a border of the solid type, with a size of thickness of a pixel and in a different color, well mark the contrast well. A lighter gray may look good, it's a matter of taste, click OK when finished. The last option in this section is the radius of the edge, the one I have now seems fine. Finally, we will change the color of the text. I will put a color similar to the border. A light gray. I will also change the text format to bold and increase its size. I will change the size from 13 to 18, and select bold in the font drop down. In the HTML section, I will change the text. I'll write share app. I like it a little more. When you're done, click apply to check your changes. As you can see, we have changed the layout of the top area of the page. It is a matter of tastes and the type of application you are creating. But the possibilities are immense. Finally, we must write the links to download the application. Enter the link that your application will have when you publish it in the application stores in each section. Click save to end this page. If your app is VIOS, do not enter the Android links or it will be rejected by a Bell review team. Let's now edit a menu page with buttons that contains a properties box. This box will make it easier for us to edit the button properties. As an example for you to see how to configure this menu, we will connect one of the buttons to the function Compare app. In the item box select one of the current buttons or items. In the lower area you will see the current properties of the element. Select our gallery. In the title option we will write the text of the button, in this case I will write share app. Watch as it changes in the preview. To change the link, click the drop down, the drop down will show you all the pages that make up the application. Choose the page you want. For example, we will leave the mosaic page selected. Finally, let's change the button icon. In the image field, click the button to open the resource manager window. Inside the manager, search and choose the image you prefer. 
Use the upload button to upload your own image. I had already prepared this icon. Do not hesitate to write us to ask for the icons you need, tell us the color you want and the function of the image and we will send them to you. If you prefer, tell us in which application you want them and we will put them ourselves. Of course, we will always give priority to active plans. As you can see, we have already edited the button completely. Use the plus and minus buttons and arrows to add new buttons, delete the selected button or change the order of the buttons. When you have everything ready, click save and then click done to return to page editing. The next page we are going to edit is the feedback page. This type of function offers us many possibilities. For example, in this application we will use it to make reservations, with just a few steps the user of the application will be able to reserve a table in the restaurant. To begin editing, click edit. The editing is very simple, add the fields you want and go configuring each one step by step. Let's review all one by one so you can know this function well. The first field is the header image. Here you can use your corporate logo or any other image. This will be the top image of the booking form. In the second field you must enter the email address that will receive all the reservation forms. It will suffice to write it. If you want to add multiple email addresses, use the add button to enable another field. In the next field, type the text that will have the send button of the form. In this case, we have used the word book. In each case use the word that best suits your application. The confirmation message will be the message that the user of the application will see immediately after submitting the form. Write a clear and short sentence. Check if you want the user to choose your location. Enable auto completion of data. It's just to help for the user. If you want the send button to save only the data check this box. Or enable the delete data button for the user to erase all data with one click. In the drop down list, choose a page if you want the user to access another page of the application using the swipe gesture. Finally, we have to configure the fields that we will ask the user of the application that completes. As always, in the table above we will see the different fields that we can introduce. And in the lower zone, we will see the properties of the selected element. Selecting the element in the top box, we see that this element is, is a text field, this text field is called last name and is a mandatory field for the user. In the type field we can configure a multitude of options. Text fields, email fields, numeric fields, dates, voice recordings, electronic signature, etc. As you have seen, this feature is very powerful and is very user friendly. Whenever necessary, we recommend using it in your applications. The next page that we are going to edit is the shopping basket function. In all the simple pages or in menu pages you can place a button to add a product to the shopping cart. These products, when added, will appear on this page. It is possible to edit the design, but it is not necessary to do so. Automatically, the shopping cart will display the colors of the style you have selected. In this type of page, it will suffice to configure the fields. As always, the configuration box is on the right of the page. In the first field, enter the email address where the payments will be sent. Must be a PayPal address. In the next field, enter the name that you want to assign to the store. Assign the currency you accept as payment method. We have introduced practically all the possible coins you may need. In the following fields, Write the message that will be displayed when there is an error in the payment process or when the payment is successful. With the last field in this section activates or deactivates the test mode. Perform various tests to make sure everything is set up correctly. To activate the shopping cart in real mode, leave the drop down in no. In the lower area you will see the instructions on how to configure each field. That's it, to end the editing click on the save button. And to return to page editing, click the done button. We are done with page editing. Let's now make some settings for the application. Now we are going to make different adjustments that allow the page configuration tool. 
In the section of configuration of pages we will be able to adjust multitude of options. For example, the transition between pages, the text of the toolbar, advertising settings, etc. As always, in the area on the left you can navigate between the different categories of the section and on the right you will see the configurations of each one of them. In the navigation settings category you can adjust the components that will appear in the navigation bar. For example, in the page of the tab when we have written the title Restaurante. If you leave the title blank it will appear empty. I recommend writing a title to make the application better. If you prefer, you can upload an image or logo. This option is only available for iOS applications. Finally, you can hide the navigation bar. To do this, uncheck the box. Let's now see the category of banner ads. In this category you can activate the advertising banners for each page individually. In the applications that you create with Creechuse apps, you will be able to add publicity of several companies or your own publicity. Choose where you want the banner, in the upper or lower area of the page. If you select Inherited, the global settings will be used. Configure the options you want. The global settings are in the upper part of the page. They will affect all the pages that the application contains. Take special care not to place two ads on the same page. You'll also be able to add full screen ads to your apps. These are called interstitial ads. These are ads that will be displayed during the transition between pages. Generally they are better paid ads than banners. Choose the pages where you want the ad to be displayed by checking the box. In the next category we can configure the transitions between pages. You can choose from a multitude of possibilities. We recommend that you do not put different transitions for each page, this is annoying for the user of the application. The transitions will create a nice and professional effect to your application. In the following category you can link the pages so that the user, with a sliding gesture, navigates between them. Simply choose the transition effect of the next page. Add the linked page and, if desired, place a sound in the transition. For example, if you have created a book, you can link page number 1 to number 2 and make a sound similar to that of passing a page. In Creechuse apps, you will be able to add a magnificent own system of valuation of 5 stars to the pages of your applications. Simply check the box on the page that you want to be valued. This system is very interesting for articles or products. The user will send his opinion and assessment of the page. You will receive an email and notification every time a new assessment takes place. Do not worry, you'll be able to eliminate those ratings that contain inappropriate language. Similarly, select whether you allow the user to share a capture of your application pages via Facebook or email. Now we will see the configuration of the web view. In this category we can configure four sections. In the first one, check the box if you want to activate the zoom. In the second section, check the box if you want the links to open on the same page. If the page is dynamic check the following box. The dynamic pages are those that offer content collected from an external file that may vary depending on the content. Use the last section to change the background color of the page. The category hosted resources in the cloud offers a powerful function. If your application contains books, PDF documents, multimedia files, etc., it will be an application that will occupy a lot of size on mobile devices. This is something that users generally do not like. With cloud resources, you can solve this problem. Adds a resource to the page, and when the user opens that page, the resource will be downloaded. For example, on a PDF reader page, add the PDF to be read upon entering it. The user will download the PDF when they access the page for the first time. Click Save and Done to continue. You have already learned how to use the application settings. Remember, we are here to support you. Use the chat service when you have doubts. We will help you delighted. Now we will adjust the properties of the application's store. Configure this section only if you want us to publish your application or if you want your application to be published for free. In the example, 
Let's see the different fields that Google Play requests to publish your application. First, write the name of the application. Remember, anything you write on this page will be used to post your application to the store. Write a short, direct name. Do not write application names that already exist and are popular or the application will be penalized. In the promotional text field, write a catchy phrase or slogan. Must contain less than 80 characters. Think this phrase well, users of Google Play will see this phrase before seeing the description of the application. The download depends a lot on it. This will be the description of your application. You must write a description of less than 4000 characters, clear and simple. You should not repeat keywords or Google Play will penalize the app. Please review the Google Play developer program policy when you want to run an Android app. In the application type, select whether you have created a game or an application, and choose the category in which your application fits best within the drop-down. Of course, you must choose the actual category. For example, do not choose education when your application tries to sell products. If you have created a video for this application, enter the link here. Google Play only allows YouTube videos. With the last section, Google Play will assign a content score. This will serve to indicate to which public is apt the application. If you have doubts, just write your email, we will do the rest. Now you must configure the images you want for the publication. We will make the screenshots of your application, we will make a nice assembly for the finish to be professional. To help you, we will also do the rest of the images, we will only do them once. If you want to upload your own images to Google Play, you'll need to upload them to this section. Ok, we have already prepared our application so that the team to create your apps can publish it in the App Store. Let's see the section Multimedia Properties. As you know, all applications need an icon. This icon will appear on the Android desktop and will serve to launch your application. You must create a unique icon for your application. Do not use the icon of an application that already exists or that of an application that seems to belong to the system. Do not hesitate to ask us for help to create your icons. The splash screen is an image that will be displayed at the beginning of the application. This image tries to disguise the loading time of the application. Our recommendation is that you create an image that contains a logo in the upper area, and in the lower area the address of the web page, just like in the rest of the images. Help us to create your image of load, we will support you delighted. Finally, load the notification icons. Will be used for application notifications. Normally, you should load the same icons that you have created for the application icons. When you are finished, click done to return to the main panel of the application. Next, let's see how sending notifications push. Click the button to access the section. The push notifications are small messages that will arrive in the form of notification to all those devices that have installed your application. First, it is very important that you know what our system will allow you to send as many push notifications as you wish. But do not abuse the notifications or the users of the application will be overwhelmed and will end up uninstalling it. You only have to send real notifications to the content of the application. Do not send other content or advertising or your application will be penalized. In the field of notification push type your message. For example, it informs the users of a new product or a temporary promotion. In addition, you have the possibility to accompany your message with an image and an action button. If you want to attach an image that you already have in the application, check the local box, and click on the button to select the image. Find the image in the resource manager and select it. If you want the image to be external to the application, check the external box and upload your image. The action button is a simple button that you can add to your notification. Select local, to search and select an application page, or external to enter a link, and type the text of the button. With this, when the user clicks on the button it will visit the page. In addition, you can make other settings for the action button. For example, if you want the user to open a map with an address, 
type the address in the external field followed by the tags that we show you. When you're ready, use the send button to launch the push notification and wait for it to be sent. Below you will see a window with shipping information and delivery information. In the next section we will configure the navigation tab settings. Click the button to access, you can choose between three main options. Create an application without tabs. In this case the main page would be the page index. You can also create an application with standard tabs. Or an application with custom tabs. If you select that the application does not have tabs, you do not need to configure anything else. Now, the main page of the application will no longer be the one tab, it will be the index page. Look at the sample to check the type of navigation. Let's now see how to set the standard tabs. Normally, this is the option used in our templates. The first is the tab number 1 and refers to the page tab 1 configuration. The second is tab number 2 and refers to tab 2. So on. If you hit more eyelashes, you would see them underneath. Let's make some adjustments. Use the duplicate button to create a replica of a tab. Notice how you have created an exact replica to the previous tab. This will be tab number 5. In the page section of the application will be tab 5. Use the delete button to delete it. Click on the cursor icon with the left mouse button and hold it to reorder the tabs. Finally, write the names of each tab in the text fields and choose an icon from the resource manager. Check the result in the image on the left. The following tabs you can create are custom tabs. In this type of tabs you will be able to customize the colors, icons, colors of the selected tab. You can also rearrange the tabs, as in the standard tabs. We will see it in detail in another tutorial. When done, click save and then done to return to the main application menu. We will learn to configure the main settings of the application. Click on the button to access the section. In all cases, the section will open in the same category as last saved. Keep in mind that this is a very important part for the final operation of your application. All will be fine using the default settings, if you have any question contact us. Comenzaremos por las opciones de inicio. In this category, you will be able to configure a page of terms of use and a welcome page. These pages will be displayed only the first time the application is started or every time, as configured. Simply check the box and choose a page. We will see it in detail in another tutorial. We see the general category. You have three simple options to configure. Check the box if you want to allow the application to switch between landscape and portrait mode. Enables or disables the default zoom for external pages. For example, if you link a web page within the application, using this setting you can allow the user to zoom in on that page. Finally, insert the link to share your application. In this case it would be the Google Play link. If you want to share the development of this application with another person, but you do not want to make certain changes, you can use the access control option. For this, the first thing to do is choose who can see the application. Select if you can only see it or anyone can see it. Then check the box to allow private access and choose the pages of the application that you will allow to use. Enter a secret access code for the person with whom you will share the management of your application. In the next category you can configure the settings button within the application. If you activate any of these two settings, an adjustment button will appear in the application on the top right. If you check the box for the force synchronization option you will allow the user to synchronize the settings at any time, typically. Synchronization settings in the cloud are synchronized at the start of the application. An example, if your application is news but you have not created a dynamic page, with this option will allow the application user to update the content. The option to delete synchronized settings will prevent the user from deleting all the synchronized changes that have occurred since the last construction of the application that has been installed. This is a very useful option in applications that have multimedia content downloads or large files. By activating this option the user can delete them when he no longer needs them. 
In the next category, we find the advertising settings in the application. If you want to earn revenue by advertising in the application, in this section you must enter the identifiers of the different ads. For this, you must register with the mobile advertising company. Register your application and create the announcements. You can see it in detail in another tutorial. You should know that in creating your apps, you can add your own banner ads. You will also see it in detail in another tutorial. If you have a Facebook application, you can connect it to your mobile application by inserting in this category the application identifier. You will need the Facebook application if you insert the chat feature, or a rating system, and you want the users to access it. The specific options we will see in the tutorials are the functions required. In creating your apps you already have a good system of usage statistics of your applications. But if you want to do a complete analysis of statistics you can use Google Analytics. To use it, you must create an account in Google Analytics and generate an identifier for this application. Copy and paste the identifier in the box and you will already have prepared the analytical system. What are SMTP settings? Some functions such as the contact form, access and registration function, or feedback function, user email system to send emails. By means of the localization adjustments you can make translations in the application. You can translate the texts of the native functions of the application. Click edit app strings to access text strings. In the area on the left you will see the text strings and in brackets the current translation. If you select a text string, in the area on the right you will see its properties. The field name shows the name of the text string, this field should not be modified. In the value section you will see the translation, right here your own translation. Let's see an example, I will translate the word home, into Spanish. As I know it refers to the startup screen, I'll write startup in the value field. Translate all the text strings you need. Note that your application will not need all fields. In this case, it is best to test your application in our preview application and check the translations you need to perform. With this, we are finished with the application settings. Save to confirm the changes and return to the main application panel. Let's now look at the main style of the application. In this section you can adjust the bar style and the native functions of the application. In the area on the left you have the color settings and on the right the previews lizard or so that you see the result of the changes you are making. Use the main properties to set a base color. Select between all clear, dark or combined. Or select your own main color and an accent color. In the next section choose the colors for the top bar of the application. Select an accent color, a color for the elements and a color for the title. In the last section you will change the colors of the tab bar. Choose an accent color and a color for the element. Let's see some example. I'll change the colors of the main theme. See how the preview will change to violet tones. Now I will change the color of the main bar. I will put a striking color so that it is well appreciated. You should pay attention to the fact that the elements have a different color than the main color so that they can be appreciated. If not, some elements might not look right. Here, I will put a reddish color so that there is a high contrast. Finally, I will put the colors of the tab bar. You will see that you can adjust the color of the text and the color of the lower hairline. I will continue to put different colors so that we can see the elements that change. The last will be the text of the tabs. As you can see, it's very simple. Perform as many tests as you wish until you get the color scheme you want for your application. As a comment, I want to tell you that the design you see is based on the framework material design for Android. We added this framework recently. One more proof that in creating your apps your applications will always have the newest possibilities. Your applications, always up to date. Always compatible, always up to date. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next video. See you soon.